Welcome back to the Australian Rotary Health podcast called The Research Behind Lift the Lid. I'm Jessica Cooper, and today on episode 40, we welcome Professor Alison Kalia from the Australian National University. Professor Kalia was awarded a mental health research grant from Australian Rotary Health from 2017 to 2018 for the project Silence is Deadly, a cluster randomised controlled trial of a mental health help-seeking intervention for young men. Alison is a professor at the Centre for Mental Health Research, working in the areas of youth mental health, e-health, and the prevention and early intervention of anxiety, depression, and suicide. Alison heads the Prevention, Promotion, and Educational Systems Research Unit, and is currently leading an evaluation of the Sources of Strength Suicide Peer Leadership Program in Australian schools. So thank you so much uh, for joining me on the podcast today, Alison. What, what have you been up to? Also, as you mentioned, we've been evaluating the sources of um, strength programs. So at the moment, we're analysing the data um, for that project and um, doing some really interesting analyses, looking at um, predictors of suicide risk in young people in the transition um, from suicidal ideation to attempt, which hopefully we can share with everyone soon. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like, yeah, a really important study and it would be great to hear those findings when they come out. <laughs> Um, I know it was only just recently that you had a paper published in the journal um, Suicide and Life-Threatening Behaviour, which reflected some of the results from um, this research grant, Trialing the Silence is Deadly program. So um, it'll be really great to talk about that in more detail today. Uh, But uh, just to start off, can you tell our audience what the Silence is Deadly program is and and who it was designed for? Oh, definitely. So the Silence of Uh, Silence is Deadly program um, is a program that's delivered in the ACT um, to male secondary um, school students um, by Menslink. So Menslink is a community organisation in the ACT that provides counselling and educational programs um, focused on men um, and their mental health. So the Silence is Deadly program, it's a single session program. So it's it's a one-off program. They go into schools and deliver over 45 to 60 minutes. It's mainly focused on psychoeducation, so giving young men information on um, the signs and symptoms and risk factors um, for mental health problems, um, but also really helpful information on how to support and manage their own mental health, but also how to um, support a mate um, who might be having mental health problems. So they really take it from the focus as well of of looking at masculine norms and how that might impact help seeking for young men. Um, It often involves um, two presenters, um, one from Men's Link, but also usually another um, presenter who uh, might be a celebrity athlete. So the Canberra Raiders have been involved in this program and um, both presenters, uh, I suppose it's that role modelling showing young men how they've managed and and sought help in the past and and breaking down those barriers um, to help seeking that we see in this population. Yeah, and it is such an important issue at the moment, um, you know, in society, you know, tackling that those suicide rates in young men. So this would be a very important pro- um, program for that, I think. Um, uh, when you were designing the study, what, what were you hoping to sort of find out and how did you go about answering those questions? Yeah, so our main interest uh, in this program, so this program, Silence is Deadly, has been running in the ACT since uh, 2013. So it's a a pretty well-established program in ACT schools. And we were interested, as as well as Men's Link, to sort of see if we could measure and um, the effects this program was having uh, on young men's mental health, um, but more importantly, on their help-seeking behaviours, so help-seeking attitudes, intentions and behaviours. So anecdotally, Um, They felt the program was working. Schools and the students um, saw benefit in it, but really wanted to capture those effects um, in a trial. So what we did is ran a a control trial, um, comparing a a group of students who received the Silence is Deadly program with a group of students who didn't receive the program and to see whether it uh, had an effect um, on help seeking um, for those young men. Mm. And, And so when you did conduct that trial, what sort of findings came out there? So the, the main key finding um, that we found, which was really positive, is that it improved 
help seeking intentions from friends. And, and this really aligned with the main messaging of the program, um, which is that importance of um, pro providing support to friends in times of distress and also seeking help from friends um, when having a difficult time. So uh, yeah, they really aligned with the main messaging of the program. The program does also talk about reaching out and seeking help from adults, um, but the main message is about you know, that first step, um, we know young people often talk to their friends. So it's about encouraging young men to reach out to their friends and to provide that support. Um, and we saw that that improved as a result of the program, which was really positive. We also collected a lot of qualitative feedback about the program, um, which was also really interesting that um, the young men found the program to be really engaging, um, to give them really a lot of practical advice and information on what to do, you know, how to start those conversations with the mate, because often, you know, we can encourage people to do this, but they just don't know how to start that conversation. So um, that was really important. And the staff also see that the, the program's engaging, the stories are real, and something that the that the young men um, can relate to um, and that they can see that these are real problems that other people are having and how they're overcoming them, which is really, really important, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, there's some very important findings there. So yeah, I'm glad that you were able to find yeah a lot there. And and and, and those were some of the, the main findings that came out in that um, journal article as well. Or was there something else in the in the journal article that you'd like to highlight? Yeah, so they're the main effects. I mean, I think it's really actually hard to change um, help seeking. I mean, I think it's one of these things that we've been trying a lot. How do we how do we encourage? We know help seeking is low in this population, and how do we encourage young men, but but also older men and, and women, how to actually take that step and, and receive services and support when they need it. So, and yeah, we're really pleased with this finding that we could change those intentions to seek help, but people were more open and willing to say, if I have a, a difficult problem, um, I will reach out to someone and get help. And I, I see friends as being that first step so they can go to friends. And then within that program, it's also encouraging friends to say, then it's important to reach out further reaching out to teachers, reaching out to parents, um, coaches or the like, who then hopefully can link them also um, to school counsellors or to um, the, the, their GP and things like that. So it's a really positive first step, I think, this program in, in trying to change the norms and behaviours around seeking help in young men. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that's just so important. And I, I guess, um, like, looking at this study now and looking at the program, do you think that these findings might have any real world implications in, in terms of potentially preventing suicide in young men? I definitely think so. I think it starts those conversations and those really positive conversations around the importance of seeking help and seeking help early, you know, changing those attitudes that it's, and one of the main, um, I suppose, catchphrases or, or phrases that they use in the program is it's not weak to speak. So I think it's really important to get that message that it's, it's okay to seek help, um, normalising it to say other people need to seek help um, and, yeah, that it's not weak to speak. And so I think it does start to change that and change those norms in, in that population that it is okay to seek help. But you don't need to be embarrassed by it or, or ashamed by it um, and making it more normal. So I think that's what this program starts to do. Yeah, well, good. Um, and, and in terms of um, further research into this program, uh, are there already plans in the works or are you looking at maybe um, targeting different um, de demographics as well? Yeah, so there's not uh, any immediate plans to do any more research, particularly on this program, but as a result um, of this evaluation, um, Men's Link are looking to adapt the program slightly. So it is a program that's routinely delivered in schools in the ACT. Um, and from the feedback from this evaluation, they've seen that there would be value in sort of targeting uh, different things in different age groups. So they're going to have a look at that. So it might be bullying um, as being an issue in, in one age group um, and relationships in another and, and things like that. So I think that's a really positive outcome. And again, once these adaptions are made, um, there might be scope to do another evaluation to see, again, the effects um, it may be having um, on young men um, and their help seeking, which is great. There's also a really keen interest. Um, so within the ACT, the, the Men's Link program and the Science is Deadly program is quite well known. Um, it's in most of the ACT schools, but also it has a television campaign. Um, so the community is quite aware of it um, as well. And there's been a push and an interest in the need for a program similarly targeted to gender in females. Um, so again, recognising that 
there may be specific needs of, of young women in seeking help as well. And so there's um, a bit of a movement towards looking at the specific needs of women in this, um, in this landscape as well, as well as obviously the, the gendered focus on, on men. Yeah. And I guess what about other states as well? It's in the ACT at the moment, but will that expand across Australia? I mean, I think that's a really interesting question. So obviously it's been focused here and, um, you know, Menzink being focused here. And I, I think that would be an interesting question, probably also for Menzink down the track if there was interest in in groups, you know, speaking with, with Menzink about, you know, the opportunity of, of you know, um, replicating the program elsewhere. I definitely think there would be, there would be that interest. Um, you know, they sort of own the program, so we don't sort of have control over that, but I know that, you know, they definitely have that interest in, in spreading that message and that important work um, outside of the ACT. Yeah, and, and if someone at the moment and they, they lived in the ACT and that they want to access this program, how could they go about accessing it? Yeah, definitely. So it's mainly delivered in schools at the moment, um, but I think yeah, getting in direct contact with Menslink, um, you know, they have a website, menslink.org.au, um, and I definitely think they'd be able to contact someone there about having this program um, either in their school or possibly youth group and, and things like that. It's, you know, it's a broad program. And as I mentioned before, Menslink has a number of other services targeted to young men as well, um, counselling and mentoring programs as well, which is really important to supporting um, the mental health of, of men and boys. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I guess as well, um, like you've already covered, yeah, it's important to seek help. But do you, do you have any other tips maybe to share for young people who might be experiencing mental health problems or suicidal ideation or, or maybe for parents or teachers who may be concerned about young people in their life? Yeah, definitely. I think my main message would be, you know, that it's really important to reach out to someone and, and to seek that help and, you know, that it can be really, I think, um, nerve-wracking or confronting at first. But, um, yes, reaching out and, and starting that conversation with someone. And it may be with a friend where they might feel more comfortable then and, and can have that support to go to an adult uh, and talk to them. Um, it may be that it's hard to, to verbalise it. So it could be writing a note or a, or a letter to a parent or to a teacher or someone to express that they're having a difficult time because we do know sometimes it's how do you start that conversation and there's different ways uh, we can do that. And we see that within our research that a lot of young people, what they see the benefit out of the research is as we identify they're at risk through our surveys because we are measuring symptoms of, of depression or anxiety um, or suicide risk. And it actually provides that opportunity for them to reach out because we will notify their school and then the school counsellor or psychologist will reach out to them. And we find that really starts that conversation. So for some people, it's finding that way to to start talking um, and I think, you know, there's many ways you can do that. And for parents and teachers, I think it's about keeping those communication channels open, not having that sort of trying to be, not be judgmental um, um, about um, these issues, keeping that dialogue about mental health um, and the need to reach out really positive and open, I think is really important. Some research we did recently where young people really highlighted that they didn't want their parents to solve their problems. They just wanted their parents to listen and to believe them when they said they had mental health problems. So they want them to be there with them, to be on their team, but not necessarily to solve those problems. So I think it's about having that attitude of being there with their child um, and saying, we can go on this journey together rather than trying to solve it or otherwise trying to pretend it's not there. So that was their other thing too, believing that it's real um, yeah. when they say that there's a problem. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, some very important advice there. And, um, yeah, hopefully um, anyone listening might be able to get something out of that if they're concerned about someone. So thank you for, yeah, for, yeah, for bringing that up. Um, um, I know that suicide is also a very important um, topic for many communities, um, especially for Rotarians uh, who raise money for Australian Rotary Health Research. Uh, could you maybe explain the benefit of continuing to fund research into suicide prevention? Yeah, I think, I think one of the really important things about funding suicide research is that it allows us to test programs like Silence is Deadly to really see you know, how these programs are working um, and that supports their future funding. They're supported 
um, in some ways from, from different sources of funding. So that helps them. But I think it's really important to work out that programs work and also more importantly to work out that things aren't causing harm. So that's where I think it's really important to have um, funding and support to evaluate the programs we're doing, um, make sure they're working, make sure they're working to the best of their, their capability and capacity so that we can be making the strongest effects on, on youth mental health um, and preventing suicide in this population. And particularly some of these smaller programs, it would, might be harder to attract really large funding for. So really make sure at that community level that we know that the initiatives we have in our communities are working. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I guess as a, also as a researcher in the mental health field, how, how has funding from Australian Rotary Health um, helped you personally? Yeah, definitely. I think um, the funding support, you know, sometimes is really helpful to do um, pilot trial or pilot work where you can get that initial findings and um, work out the effectiveness of a program, which then facilitates and helps you um, to get larger funding um, for a bigger project. Um, it allows us to be able to support the community um, in evaluating their programs um, and, and seeing that they work and, and allowing those programs to, to continue to develop and prosper in our communities. Um, and it's great as an academic too, to be able to um, do that research that's, that's moving the literature and the research field forward um, so that we can identify um, new areas that we may need to intervene with or better understanding uh, suicide risk um, in young people, in adults, so that we could help uh, this population and hopefully reduce suicide in our community. Yeah. Yeah, well, as I mentioned before, yeah, suicide prevention is so important to our Rotarians. So it's, it's been really great to talk about your research today and the sort of outcomes that have come out of that program, especially for a, a demographic that is so at risk of suicide as well. So, yeah, it's very important work. And, um, yeah, I, I guess it's, yeah, it's really important to keep continue, continuing what you're doing. And I'm sure it's very much appreciated by the community. Yeah, it's an area that I, uh, you know, I have two young boys. I've got a, an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. And so, you know, that's part of my driver as well is sort of, you know, having a, a community and an environment that supports their mental health and that, that there'll be ways that they can reach out for support and help if they need it down the track. So I sort of, I suppose that's part of my driver as well is, um, you know, for my own kids and, and those I see around them. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, I guess before we wrap up today, was there anything else that you'd like to add? Anything we didn't cover about your research? Or... Yeah, I just, I just think that it's, you know, that for people to know that there's help available and if they need it to, to reach out and whether that's to family and friends or to their GP, um, to a psychologist or, or a helpline, um, that there are people that are there and able to assist and support them. And, um, you know, that sometimes it can be difficult the first time, but you know, making that call um, to a friend, family member um, or someone to get that support, you know, is really important and people are there to help and want to help and support them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much again, Alison. Thank you for having me. It's been great. And, and thank you again for the generous support and funding um, from Australian Rotary Health. It's been great to have that, to, to see this project um, through in the evaluation, which has been really beneficial. Oh, no, no problem at all. Thank you again. That was the 40th episode of our podcast called The Research Behind Lift the Lid. It's always so inspiring to hear what researchers in Australia are doing to make a difference to mental health and how they are helping us on our mission to lift the lid on mental illness. If you can, please support important suicide prevention research like Alison's by donating on the Australian Rotary Health website. Thank you for listening. Please join us again next time. Thank you.